Hello, I'm James Ritchie Carroll with the Grid Protection Alliance. Here at GPA, we specialize in open source software for the electric power industry. Today, we're going to demo the latest version of the Open Historian. Open Historian is a NoSQL type of historian for fast processing of time series style data. It uses a B plus tree for fast reads and writes, and it's really fast. It writes data at about 14 million points per second, and it reads data at about 15 million points per second. It's really only limited by your disk I.O. It uses lossless compression to reduce the total size of the storage on the disk. So as an example, if you had a SCADA system with 20,000 points, even if you're archiving data every two seconds, it would take nearly 10 years to fill up a two terabyte drive, so it's very compact. Since it's fast and it's open source and it stores data efficiently, Open Historian is a very effective historian for those who aren't ready to invest in a very expensive uh, commercial historian. Open Historian can use Modbus, it can use DMP3, all the synchrophaser protocols, and it doesn't have all the fancy features that a big historian might have, but because it is very fast and it's extremely extensible, it's very useful uh, for small to medium sized businesses. And uh, because it is so fast, it's great for machine learning. So we're here today to do a demo for the Open Historian itself. So today I'm going to install the Open Historian on my laptop. Uh, nothing special about this laptop, just a small Windows laptop. But the intended sort of uh, installation target for the Open Historian will be like a back-end server. So it's supposed to run unattended on a piece of server hardware. But today, just for this demo, I'll run it on the Open Historian. Certainly if it can run on this laptop, it'll run really well on a big server. It, it, we are doing Windows today, but the system will also run on Linux, just as an example. To go get the software, you need to go to Google and do a quick search. So let's go to google.com and let's search for Open Historian. So it should be one of the first ones. It's located on GitHub. And GitHub is a place where open source software lives. So Open Historian is completely free. Free to install, free to use. What GPA does is we offer support for people who want to use it. To install it, you just need to click on the releases. I'm going to click there. I'm going to click open historian installs.zip and it'll start downloading the file. Once the file is downloaded, we can install it. So now I'm going to click on the downloads folder and we will install the open historian. I'm just going to double click on the setup file. It's going to walk through a standard Windows installation for the open historian. So I'm going to click next. There's a simple license here. This is a very liberal open source license. Click to accept. Here's a screen here that allows you to sort of pick and choose the options you want to install. I'm going to leave them all selected means install everything. This screen allows you to pick the service under sort of the service account under which the open story will run. The default one is fine. Click next again. Type in your company name, your company acronym. This can be used as part of the metadata when it creates new points for the system. And go. So very little setup information required. The Open Historian installation does not take up a tremendous amount of space on the disk. It is a .NET application, which means you need to have .NET installed already. Most new Windows computers installation already have .NET installed. If you didn't, it would tell you during that process. Okay, the Open Historian is now completed and set up. So the first thing it does when I click Finish, it's going to launch something called the Configuration Setup Utility. This setup utility uses a database to hold configuration information. Now, the data that's stored by the historian doesn't go into the database. It goes onto a special file on the disk. So this database is just used for configuration information, such as the connectivity information to the devices you want to connect to, whether it would be Modbus or DMP3 or some synchrophaser device. You have to tell the system where to go get the data. So that's the kind of configuration information that's stored. It also stores 
point level information, you know, the actual individual measurements that is going to be archived by the system. It'll have a description and an ID. So it's that kind of information that's stored in the database. So let's run the configuration setup utility and we will create a new database for the system. I'm going to set up a new configuration. It's a database. You get to choose what kind of database you want to use. Now, if you already have a database installed, maybe in your corporation you have SQL Server or Oracle, or maybe you've got MySQL or Postgres, you can use any of those. Since I'm on my laptop, I'm just going to pick something called SQLite. It's a very small, compact database that requires no additional information uh, or installation. So I'm going to click SQLite. And for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to check the box that says Run Sample Data Script, which gives me some data to play with as we try to demo the system. And for SQLite, it's just a file. So you pick a file location and a name. Then you pick the super user, the primary person who has the ability to configure security inside the Open Historian. By default, this will be you, the person installing it. And you can change this later. But you have to start with someone who has rights to be able to configure the system. And then you get to pick where do you want to apply these changes. This configuration setup utility can be used again in the future to go back and change things. In this case, we're going to apply the configuration to all the software components that are being installed. This screen allows you to select and set up your primary historian. You might be surprised to find out that there are other historians in the list, like eDNA, OSI Pi, MongoDB. This is a very extensible system. Just because you have an open historian running and operating doesn't mean you can't also integrate with eDNA and OSI and push data to those simultaneously. As a matter of fact, some of our biggest clients use the Open Historian in conjunction with some of the larger commercial tools because it's so much faster. So here's the configuration st string uh, for the Open Historian, how you set things up. You can archive data to multiple drives on your system, attach different kinds of paths. You can change how it's archiving the data. For example, this directory naming mode allows you to specify the folder structure for the files. Do you want to go put all the data in one big giant folder? Do you want to separate it by year, by year and month, or by year then month? By default, it's year then month. So lots of configuration options. But if you don't change a thing, everything's OK. It's going to use its defaults. So I'm just going to click Next. And now the setup's ready. So that's really the full set of options that you have when you're configuring the Open Historian for the first time. So now it's going to create the database file add you as a user, and now we're ready to go. So I'm going to click Next, and I'm going to click Finish, and the installation will start. So here's the login page for the Open Historian. So on this front page, I'm going to click Use Integrated Authentication, and just for convenience, I'm going to keep myself signed in. So I'm going to click at the Login button, and I'm logging into the front page. Now the first thing I want to do is make sure that there's some data actually flowing into the system. Because we selected sample data, we should have some. So I'm going to click the Trend button, Trend Export Archive Data button. So I'm clicking that. And this screen allows you to browse the points that are available in the system. So you can see there's several points that are available already. The current value is changing. I'm going to select all of them on this front page. And I'm going to click the Trend Data tab. When I do that, I'm set initially to trend the last five minutes in my start and stop time. I'll just click the trend button immediately, and we should get some data back, and we do. On this screen, you can use your, your wheel to sort of zoom into data. You can zoom in, zoom out, and actually see uh, all the data that's being archived by the system, so a very convenient screen. This particular screen also has another tab called Export Data. So the Export Data tab allows you for this given set of points and this time range to also export data. So I'm going to click the Export button. And for the last five minutes, you can see it's already exported. It's nice and fast. I'm going to click on the, the export. It's just a regular CSV file. You can also do ComTrade. It will pull up Microsoft Excel. And here's our five minutes of data. So this is a good and handy way to get data back out of the system. One of the newer features of the Open Historian is integration with a tool called Grafana. Grafana is a visualization system. 
that allows you to trend and display and create new displays. So we're going to demo this piece of the system as well. There's a screen that comes in the system by default it's called System Status. If you click on that, it shows you the current Open Historian CPU, its memory utilization, uh, the Grafana CPU utilization and its memory usage, how long things have been running, the data completeness versus, in other words, how much I've received versus what I've expected to receive, how many active inputs I have. But this is a good example of the kinds of dashboards you can create with Grafana. So let's create a new screen with Grafana just to show you how easy this is and how you can actually make use of your data. So I'm going to go back to the home screen and I'm going to create a new dashboard. So up at the top left, there's a little button that says Home, and there's a little drop down. And over to the right, there's a button that says New Dashboard. So the dashboards that you create can do trend graphs, single statistics, tables of data, uh, individual bits of text based on trending data. And the Grafana website itself has many other kinds of displays and information. We can show you some of those in a few minutes. So the first one I'm going to do is a graph because it's the easiest. So here is a, an example of a graph. I'm going to click on the title and click Edit. So on the Edit screen you have several options. You can just pick points you want to trend. You can do a filter expression or type in an expression manually. So let's just pick a few points first. So if we do that, there's a little plus button besides, beside elements, and you'll see a list of points pop up. So in this case, this is all of our sample data. If I pick the frequency, I should get some frequency. And over to the right, you see some data. You'll notice that the top right says for the last six hours. We've not been running that long, so there's not that much data. So let's change our timing to like the last five minutes. And when we do that, you see we've got a lot more data. You can actually take from the screen and zoom in a little further if you'd like. So you have the ability to pan left, pan right, change the date range, or even set the, the screen to automatically refresh for like the last five minutes. But you can see how you can quickly start creating value by getting data out of the system. So I'm going to close this frequency here and you'll see now I've got one row which represents a frequency. This screen is actually very powerful. You can create other kinds of graphs. Let's say we wanted to create an average of all the frequencies in the system. So I'm going to add a panel. So over the very far left there's the little three little dots that are sort of uh, stacked together. If you hold your mouse over them you've got some options. I'm going to click add panel. I'm going to do single statistic, single stat. So now we have two panels, a panel to the left we just worked with and a panel to the right. Well, obviously you may not want this panel to be that big, so you have some options. If you click on the panel title, you can use the plus and minus to grow and shrink these panels. So I want my single stat to be about that size. I'm going to go back to my trend graph and make it bigger. And now we've got a trend to the left and a single stat on the right. So again, this single stat is going to be our average frequency, so I'm going to click on its title and click Edit. And this time, instead of using, just picking points out of the list, I'm going to use something called a filter expression. You may have all kinds of points in your system, but they're all classified by signal type. You may have frequencies and voltage phase angles and uh, you know, megawatts and megavars. So each of these has a signal type. So let's go pick all the frequencies that are defined in the system. To do that, we're going to use something called a filter expression. So I'm going to click on filter expression. And this time, instead of having points to pick from, I'm actually building something that's very similar to something called SQL or a structured query language. So I'm building a where expression, which basically says what fields I want to query. So we said we wanted all frequencies, so I want all the measurements where the signal type is equal to frequency. And let's see what happens. And now we do get a value back immediately that's 60. But we also 
now that we're getting multiple values, we want to get the average of those. So I'm going to click the average function. So now we have the average of all the frequencies in the system just with a few clicks. The other thing you can do here on the single stat is sort of adjust the decimals. We know it's not exactly 60, so let's add a couple of decimals, and you can see it's 59.97, or maybe 3, 59.966. Perfect. The other thing you can do is sort of postfix that with the word HZ. So now we have, you know, hertz on there. Lots of more options you can put on here, different kinds of coloring, thresholds, alarms. It's very powerful. Let's just go ahead and put a title on. We know this is average frequency. And now that we're done with this little panel, we come back to the main screen. We have the trend on the left and the average frequency on the right. Well, we can actually change the title on this one too. This is just frequencies. And let's change this to refresh every couple of seconds. So we're looking at the last five minutes and we want to refresh every five seconds. Now every five seconds, the screen is going to refresh and you can use this sort of as a dashboard, just as an example. So now we've built a screen in Grafana. We need to save it and give it a name. We can call this the frequency dashboard. And now when you go back to the home screen, you've got the original system status graph that we had before. You can go there, go back to the home screen, and now you can pick your frequency dashboard, and it'll pick up the frequencies. So this just gives you an example of how you can build quick displays with your streaming data that's coming in. So that's it. I hope this is helpful to you for learning to use the Open Historian. And if you have any questions, just come visit our website. Thanks so much.